Greetings everybody. I am Shujat Ali from Medicos Lectures by Shujat and today we are going to talk about GIT histology. Means we are going to study gastrointestinal tract at a tissue level. So whenever we are going to study something at a tissue level, we have to know its layers and also the layers sublayers. So in case of GIT we have four major layers: mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa and serosa or adventitia. Mucosa is the outermost layer. It contains further three major layers, which are epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. In the same way, submucosa contains blood vessels, lymphatics, and nerves. And muscularis externa is further divided into two layers: outer circular and inner longitudinal layer. and serosa or adventitia it contain mesothelial cells and is retroperitoneal now talking about this very first layer of mucosa the epithelium and its role in gi tract epithelium epithelium is stratified squamous in esophagus stratified columnar without goblet cells in stomach in small and large intestine it is stratified columnar but with goblet cells and in case of anal canal there is a slight change in that means uh, it varies from surfaces we have stratified columnar cuboidal non keratinized and keratinized talking about the roles of epithelium in our gi system so first role is protective role means it protect gi from pathogens and antigens second role is absorptive role we have microvilli villi which are mucosal projections and uh, we have lica circularis which are submucosal projections we have glycocalyx for absorption and disaccharide digestions so they basically play a role in absorption lica circularis glycocalyx villi and microvilli they absorb the nutrients from that in the same way there is some secretory role if there is an absorptive role so secretion are basically by mucus by enzymes by antibodies they are going and perform their secretions we also have glands we name them as brunner's gland which are playing role in alkaline secretion and extramural gland which are basically present uh, extracellularly so we name them that extramural gland not talking about further layers so in muscularis mucosa it is basically a thin layer of smooth muscles having inner circular and outer longitudinal layer our main point is lamina propria lamina propria is basically a next to that of epithelium epithelium is outermost layer then lamina propria present then muscularis mucosa occurs so lamina propria basically it contains some glands some cells from esophagus to small and large intestines So in esophagus it contain cardiac glands in stomach it contains gastric glands which are possessing chief cells having main role in secretion of hcl and pepsinogen in the same way in small intestine there is different cells having different roles like we have penit cell we have crypts of leberkorn muscularis secretion as well as lamina propria Uh, there when we basically see the structure so muscularis externa then we have lamina propria on that lamina propria we have muscularis uh, we have penit cells and we have crypts of leberkuhn talking about uh, the penit cells we also have pear patches and m cells talking about penit cells they are basically special type of cells which secrete lysosomes and alpha defensin and pear patches they are large lymphoid nodules uh, this basic structure we have a lymphoid nodule and when they become a very large we says that we have a pear patch on surface of these lymphoid nodules these pear patches we have m cells that are going to be present we also name them as microfold cells so what's the difference between small and large intestine large intestine didn't have intestinal villi while small intestine possessing intestinal villi crypts of leberkuhn is present in small intestine as well as in large intestine 
while penit cells which have main role in lysozyme secretion and alpha defense in is absent in large intestine while in the same way penit cell is present in small intestine Talking about further details so we have submucosa which is possessing large blood vessels nerve plexus and occasional glands occasional means which are present which are not present all around all all through the throughout the organs they are present occasionally at a distant locations nerve plexus nerve plexus are basically are of two types submucosal or mesenteric and mesenteric or orbic talking about submucosal or mesenteric so it contains pre and post parasympathetic nerve fibers as well as post sympathetic self bodies as well as post ganglionic fibers and mesenteric or orbic it contains pre ganglionic parasympathetic cell fibers post ganglionic in the same way it contain a supply that is mainly concerned with vagus nerves muscularis externa it is divided into two layers in initial we discussed it inner is circular outer is longitudinal inner layer has a role in mixing movement and outer has its role in peristalsis and uh, hostra hostra is basically a ribbon like arrangement of large intestine like this so we says that it is hostra talking about the last layer which is basically the outermost cirrosa and enterotitia cirrosa it contain mesothelial cells plus connective tissue and adventitia it is made up of only connective tissue no mesothelial cells outermost part of git and it is attached with abdominal cavity pelvic cavity and with connective tissue of adventitia so guys this is our basic overview lecture overview of layers and sub layers of organs and a uh, complete git system hope you all will understand it don't forget subscribe medcos lectures by shujaat thank you so much